the, the Quran uh, prohibited things like alcohol, like gambling, like zina, right? Um, pretty much everything the Quran prohibited is addictive. Everything has addictive tendencies. So for example, the prohibition against zina, we know now how, what kind of addiction pornography is. That it's actually, people have to get into therapy to get out of it. It's, it's very serious. Gambling is an addiction. People lose their entire homes. Alcohol and any intoxicant is an addiction. Right? Allah says, They stay away from useless consumption of conversation. Now we know useless content is an addiction. There's, a, there's billions being made out of humanity's addiction to lahu. Right? And all of these addictions are immersions. You immerse yourself in the drink. You immerse yourself in the useless conversation. You immerse yourself in pornography. You immerse yourself in drugs or alcohol or whatever. Every one of them is actually, the Qur'an prevented them for a reason because human beings can be self-destructive with every one of those tendencies. It's incredible that pin, the Qur'an pinpoints every last one of them. Every last one of them. Timelessly. It's not like, oh, the Qur'an addresses issues of 1400. No, human beings are still wired the same exact way. We develop new tech to support our old habits. <laughs> They're not new habits. It's just new tech. But our, our issues are still the same issues that were there for since Allah created us. Same shaitan, same, he's got the same sale, he's just got a different you know, sales mechanism. That's all it is. So here, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي غَمْرَةٍ سَاهُونَ Distraction is the ultimate enemy. By the way, when someone's distracted, what are they not doing? They're not thinking. Remember I told you this whole battle is about thought? Right? So now you'll inshallah see that when someone gets so immersed in this, then the thing that's supposed to snap them out of it is, you know like the, the I told you the exam, right? Three hours from now there's an exam. Bro, what are you doing? Get off the phone. There's an exam, right? Then if you're so deeply drowned, you say, I don't care about no exam. If you're really far gone, you're like, forget the exam, man. I'll just tell the professor, he'll, he'll give me a makeup exam, right? That's what happens spiritually. Then the person says, Yes, Aluna Ayana Yomuddin. They even ask, When is this judgment day? What, what, come on, enough. They could ask this now, you know, rhetorically, why would somebody ask a question? People ask a question to know if they don't know, right? They ask, When is judgment day? When is it gonna? And Ayana is a more emphatic form. So, like, come on, when is it? When? Uh, when is judgment day? Ayana Yomuddin. Sorry about the mic. I know you, you, your heart jumped. I know. <laughs> so one, one reason a question rhetorically in Balagha studies, we study what other psychological reasons are there when people ask a question. It's not just to know. For example, when you say, Mazaya, you like that? Hmm? Hmm? You enjoyed that? Like your, your dad says after he gives you one, he goes, you like that? Hmm? Hmm? Did you learn now? You understand now? And you don't answer that one. No, I still actually, can you explain that again? <laughs> <laughs> you don't do that. But what could be some of the reasons why this question is being asked? It could be istibad. Oh, come on, when is it? Seriously? Like, it's impossible. What you're talking about is nonsense. You're so immersed in your world that everything, nothing else makes sense to you. Because you're in the ghamra. Right? Another is annafi. No, it's not going to happen. When is it going to happen? Huh? When? Like, it's not going to happen. It could also be a tahqir. Seriously? Yeah? That's going to happen, huh? Judgment day? All right, okay. That's great. When is it happening? Can you give me a time schedule? Sarcasm? Putting someone down? Making someone feel stupid? So, at tahqir at tahakum al istimbah at sihza at tanbih ala al batil al khata al dalal al tariq When you're making them realize, you know what? You have a problem, this whole judgment day thing, this whole warning thing. Can you, get, can you not be so religious? You're, you're, you're getting extreme. I'm worried about you. Hold on a second. But I'm really worried about you. Let me go back to my version. But there, everybody else is wrong. Because you're, you, it's too difficult for you to let go. Imagine like a, a drunkard, and you try to take their bottle away. Right? They can get violent, right? So they're now having this reaction and even questioning in the next ayah. Ayyana yawmuddin. When? When is this judgment day coming? Allah is specifically describing the thing that he started with. In the deen al is a logical conclusion for those who actually use their minds. 
But those that are lost in sahu, those that are lost in alternative facts, they will boldly question that this doesn't make any sense. The people that are living the most senseless lives will call the, the actual sense senseless. They reverse engineer the truth. And you know what? The more you get lost in Ghamra, now I'll, I'll come to you and I. The more we get lost in these alternative realities and these distractions, the, the closer we will get to questioning the very basis of our religion.